the next topic is cerebellum we want to discuss some details of cerebellum now and what you find is a question this question is asking us the function of spinal cerebellar tract when the question came we thought that it is a physiology question and there could be multiple answers but lately it has been uh, identified that it is a direct question from Gray's anatomy now if it is a direct question from Gray's anatomy what is the answer because physiology books will give you multiple answers one single answer will be given by Gray's anatomy so triple answer according to physiology books and a single answer according to Gray's. Can this be the answer? Oh, why? Because this is the job of basal ganglia. Planning and programming of voluntary motor activity is basal ganglia. So what is the answer then? Because I, there are three possible answers according to physiology books. The Gray's anatomy says this is the answer. Coordination of voluntary motor activity for it is the coordination of voluntary motor activity for, say, walking in a straight line, walking in a straight line. Actually, spinocerebellar tract carry the unconscious proprioception towards the brain. What is unconscious? Unconscious means it will not reach the conscious level cerebrum. It is stopping at the cerebellum level, unconscious level. So, you are telling the answer is... Choice number B, coordination of voluntary motor activity. Yes. How do you do that? I want to walk in a straight line. So, so my lower limb should send some information, which is unconscious proprioception. So, unconscious proprioception of the lower limb is carried by the spinal cerebellar tract. Yes. To the cerebellum, not the cerebrum. And because it is going to cerebellum, it is unconscious level. If it goes to cerebrum, then you say conscious proprioception but this is unconscious what will happen if it is damaged what the spinal cerebellar tract yes then there will be ataxia what ataxia it is cerebellar ataxia how do you know it is cerebellar ataxia injury of spinal cerebellar tract can result in cerebellar ataxia in coordination how do you know it is in coordination because the patient is not walking in a straight line Patient is not walking in a straight line. No, actually. Okay, let us discuss some more details, but the answer remains choice number B. Keep the answer as choice number B and uh, look at this lady. It's a valid answer. Coordination of voluntary motor activity is quite unique and you need cerebellum there. Though, you need basal ganglia for planning and the pyramidal system for execution but uh, cerebellum for coordination so cerebellum for coordination of the voluntary motor activity yes and what if it is not coordinating then there are problem see cerebellar ataxia is a problem where the patient cannot walk in a straight line keep falling to the same side of the lesion and some other features heel shin test will become positive what is that heel shin test will become positive yeah, fine. But what is that? See, this man has cerebellar ataxia due to injury of spinal cerebellar tract. And see how is it walking? Uncoordinated, clumsy movement. There is ataxia, ataxic gait. It is anterior lobe of the cerebrum which is involved. Now, if you say anterior lobe of the cerebrum involved and something to wrong, wrong with the ataxic gait, and some uncoordinated clumsy movement. What about the other components of the cerebellum? There's a posterior lobe also. What about that? See, first you talk about this same patient, your heel shin test was positive. Yeah, what is heel shin test? Actually, you have to tell the patient, move your heel straight on the shin. But this patient will not be able to move the heel straight on the shin. The heel goes here, 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 here. Not going straight. Why it is not going straight? Because you don't know the position sense of the lower limb. Spinal cerebellar tract is compromised. As spinal cerebellar tract is compromised, I don't know the position sense of my lower limb. So my lower limb keep going in coordinated fashion. Zigzag. It is not straight. Heel shin test is positive. And patient having cerebellar lesion. There are many things. Not only there is ataxia, but there is also nystagmus. 
nystagmus and uh, when you say there is nystagmus fine is there a resting tremor or that is wrong that is the answer it is not resting tremor then what it is see in cerebellar lesion it is not resting tremor it is intention tremor if you say it is intention tremor can you tell me what is intention tremor then Intention tremor means when I have intention of a movement, tremor will come. Otherwise, there is no resting tremor. Means there is no resting tremor. No. And if the ex examiner is telling me, touch my finger, then there will be a tremor. Yes. Intention tremor. Normally, there is no tremor. So, you are telling that there is an intention of movement. Yes. And that time, there will be tremors. Yes. Okay, so this is the answer. Where do you see resting tremor? Resting tremors can be Parkinson's disease. And when you are talking about Parkinson's disease, it was some basal ganglia disorder, extra pyramidal symptomology, extra pyramidal symptomology. But uh, resting tremor here, it is not fitting. So will there be a pass pointing? Yeah, pass pointing. You are asking the patient, touch your tip of finger with the, my tip of finger. But uh, the finger goes like this and then touches. And then, then touch your tip of nose, tip of nose and uh, now touching like that. So pass pointing is there of course, but resting tremor is not there. See, this is how you do it. You have to ask the patient, touch the pen, touch your nose. So when the patient is touching the nose or the pen, there will be a pass pointing. The finger will go beyond the pen and then touch the pen like that, pass pointing. Anyway. Cerebellum, let us look at some more details, the parts and their functions. Like we said, anterior lobe is there, there is a posterior lobe also. See, when you are talking about cerebellum, it is in the posterior cranial fossa. The cerebellum is in the posterior cranial fossa and when you are looking at cerebellum, it will have some leaf-like appearance. Leaf-like appearance means foliated, it is foliated. Arbor vitae is the other name. Arbor vitae. So you are telling that it is leaf like uh, like this, like this. Yeah, arbor vitae. And uh, what else you want to know? Actually, uh, do you remember that this is the fourth ventricle? So it is at the roof of the fourth ventricle. Yeah, okay, roof of fourth ventricle. What else? It is attaching to brain stem with some peduncles. There will be a superior cerebellar peduncle, middle cerebellar peduncle, and inferior cerebellar peduncle. So, cerebellum is attaching to brain stem with some peduncle superior with the midbrain and middle with the pons and inferior with the medulla blanata. Yes, peduncles, cerebellar peduncles. Then there will be one anterior lobe, there is one posterior lobe, and there is one more. What is that? Flocculonodular lobe. So there is one anterior lobe, there is one posterior lobe and flocculonodular lobe. Flocculonodular lobe, the flocculonodular lobe is the oldest. If flocculonodular is the oldest, then which is the latest? Latest is uh, posterior. If you say posterior is latest, neocerebellum? Yes, neocerebellum. And then who is the archae cerebellum? Archae is old, you know, archaeology. Archaeology, oldest. So, oldest is flocculonodal. I want to see the flocculonodal lobe now. Okay, we'll see that. But that is archae cerebellum. See, anterior lobe is somewhere in the middle. In evolution. In evolution, this is the oldest. Archae cerebellum is flocculonodal lobe. And uh, in between the temporal line, this is anterior, but the posterior is the latest neocerebellum. With all that information, see this is the flocculonodal lobe, the oldest, the archae cerebellum, that blue color. So that blue color is flocculonodal lobe and that is the oldest, then who is the newest? Newest is this posterior lobe. And who is somewhere in the middle? This is the anterior lobe. In temporal line, this is somewhere in the mid region of timeline. Okay, fine. Now, we are looking at the coronal section of the brain from the front view. And when you look at the coronal section of the brain from the front view, you can see this is uh, the cerebellar hemisphere on the right and left side. If these are the cerebellar hemisphere on the right and left side, I think they are attaching to brain stem. Yes, this is brain stem having three components. Then you can tell this is midbrain and the pons and medulla oblongata. So, attaching to brain stem, it will be three peduncles. What are the three peduncles? Actually, 
This is the middle cerebellar peduncle attaching to pons. It will carry ponto cerebellar tract. Now, if you say middle cerebellar peduncle is connecting pons and carrying the ponto cerebellar tract, then what is the superior cerebellar tract carrying? And what is the inferior cerebellar tract carrying towards the medulla oblongata? This is all what we have to discuss. And then you can tell that this is the highest brain, the largest brain, the cerebrum. If that is the highest brain or the largest brain, the cerebrum, fine. We have to need to have some orientation because later we'll draw a diagram. This is the thalamus sandwiching a third ventricle in the midline. Now, if you say this is the thalamus sandwiching the third ventricle in the midline, fine. This is just for the orientation purpose because later we'll draw the diagram. Now, here... I have asked one patient to move in a straight line. So the patient is moving the right lower limb, right lower limb. Now, as the right lower limb is moving, there's a change of position and that change of position will be carried by right sided spinal cerebellar tract towards the cerebellum. So as the patient is trying to walk in a straight line, moving the right lower limb, the right lower limb is changing position that proprioception will be carried by spinal cerebellar tract to the cerebellum. Let us discuss that pathway now in this coronal section which we have just discussed. So you are telling that right lower limb was moving? Yes. Which tract was activated? This. What is this? This is spinal cellular tract. So this is right sided spinal cellular tract which is activated. Where is it carrying the position sense towards? The position sense towards the same sided cerebellum. And what is this uh, peduncle use here? Spinal cerebellar tract is using the inferior cerebellar peduncle. So you are telling spinal cerebellar tract will use inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach the same sided cerebellum. Now the cerebellum will communicate with the opposite thalamus. And as the cerebellum is communicating with the opposite thalamus, it will be using which peduncle? Actually, this is called as dentatothalamic tract coming from the dentate nucleus to the contralateral thalamus. So, it is coming from dentate nucleus of the cerebellum towards the contralateral thalamus, the dentatothalamic tract. Dentatothalamic tract is using which peduncle? Of course, the dentatothalamic tract will use the superior cerebellar peduncle. And what is the thalamus doing? Thalamus is communicating with the left cerebrum. Which limb was moving? Right lower limb. But the information has been received by left cerebrum. Why the left cerebrum? Because left cerebrum should have the processed information of the movement of the right lower limb. As the right lower limb moved, the cerebellum was processing the information and processed information comes to the left cerebrum. But why the left cerebrum should receive the processed information of the movement of the lower limb right side? Because it is the one which is having the corticospinal tract. To move the lower limb and before it moves the lower limb on the right side because there are crossing of fiber in the lower medulla. See corticospinal tract come from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord is crossing in the lower medulla to control the opposite side lower limb. So if you want to move the right lower limb you have to work from the left cerebrum and uh, that's why the left cerebrum required the information of the position of the right lower limb because then only it can coordinate the movement. So corticospinal tract part of the pyramidal system which moves the contralateral lower limb which is right lower limb. You need coordination. Yes, coordination and all this is important. This is what we are going to draw in a diagram now. But before you do all that, you see cerebellar pathways are quite varied and we will focus upon some and defocus from the others. So, so as you're doing it, we were telling this man to walk in a straight line. This is the right lower limb moving and right spinal cerebellar tract is activated. You will understand that it is running ipsilaterally going to the same side of cerebellum. So you are talking about the dorsal. Yeah, it is posterior or dorsal, right-sided. So right-sided dorsal spinal cerebellar tract or you can say right-sided posterior spinal cerebellar tract is running ipsilateral going to the same side of cerebellum. Is that so? Yes, and these are actually mossy fibers. They are mossy fibers. Remember that most of the fibers which enter the cerebellum are called mossy fibers. 
So there will be some more mossy fibers. Now, very few fibers are crossing the midline and start running as the ventral spinocerebellar tract, anterior or ventral is seen. You mean to say right lower limb was moving but the information crosses the midline? Yeah, the movement of right lower limb information crosses the midline and uh, start running as the ventral spinocerebellar tract to reach the contralateral cerebellum but then this contralateral cerebellum is telling where are you coming i am not your cerebellum go back to your own cerebellum and it will go to the same sided cerebellum you mean to say left cerebellum is telling that you should go to the right cerebellum yes so there is a crossing and recrossing of fiber yes actually crossing of fiber is in the spinal cord and recrossing of fiber is within the cerebellum within the cerebellum so within the cerebellum there will be some crossing of fibers yes understand uh, here it is using the superior cerebellar peduncle to reach the opposite side cerebellum and here it was using inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach the same sided cerebellum you mean to say Dorsal spinocerebellar tract uses the inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach the same sided cerebellum and ventral spinocerebellar tract is using superior cerebellar peduncle to reach the opposite side of cerebellum. Yes, but later the fibers will cross the midline and within the, it is not using any peduncle now, no peduncle here because it is within the cerebellum the fibers are crossing. That is why if I have a tumor on the right sided cerebellum where the clinical features will come, Cerebellar lesions are ipsilateral, so the problems will also come on the same side, ipsilateral problems. See, cerebellar connections are ipsilateral most of the time and cerebellar lesions will give clinical features on the same side, ipsilateral clinical features. Maybe the fibers of the right lower limb, change of position was going to the left side, but then again it came back to right side, ipsilaterally. Okay, with that information, we got one more question. This question is asking us, the marked cell is inhibiting which of the following structure? What is this? This is the three layers of the cerebellar cortex. If you say these are the three layers of the cerebellar cortex, what are the three layers? There is the outer molecular layer, there is a Purkinje layer, and then there is a inner granular layer. Okay, there is a outer molecular layer, there is a Purkinje. Are you talking about Purkinje cell here, the arrow mark? Yes, that is the point. Arrow mark is Purkinje cell, and then there will be uh, some granular layer. So, you are talking about the Purkinje cell here. Yes, how do you know it is Purkinje cell? You can identify. If you keep practicing MCQs, then you can identify. You have to practice the slides. Okay. So, we are now going into details of the cerebellar cortex. Look at the cerebellum from the posterior view. To discuss the cerebellar cortex and the three layers in the cerebellar cortex. See, when you look at the cerebellum from the posterior view, you will find that it will have a vermis in the midline. Now, if that is a vermis in the midline, fine. What else is there? There is one anterior lobe, this color anterior lobe. If you are telling that color is the anterior lobe, fine, then there will be a posterior lobe also. Yes, there is a posterior lobe also. Posterior lobe. So, you are telling that there is one anterior lobe and there is a posterior lobe and then there is a midline vermis connecting the two cerebellar hemispheres. Yes, you can say that, that there is a vermis connecting the two cerebellar hemispheres, there is anterior lobe. Which one is uh, more latest? Actually, posterior. We have learned that posterior lobe is neocerebellum. It is more latest in evolution and anterior lobe is old in evolution. Okay, which is the oldest then? If you say oldest, we will find out. But remember, there is a primary fissure which is separating anterior from the posterior. So, you are telling that there is some primary fissure here? Yes. There is some primary fissure here. Yes, that is a primary fissure and this primary fissure is uh, separating anterior and posterior lobe. Yes, that is a primary fissure. Where is the floccular nodular lobe then? That we will discuss but here as you are talking about the posterior view of the cerebellum, take a coronal section. Why? To, to see the 
deep cerebellar nuclei. So you are uh, taking a coronal section to see what the deep cerebellar nuclei. Deep cerebellar nuclei, who are they? They are actually D, E, F, G. What is this D, E, F, G, deep cerebellar nuclei? We'll discuss that. But can you see there is this arbor vitae? What is arbor vitae? Actually, there is some white matter coming and then going into the folia of the cerebellar cortex. This uh, leaf-like thing is folia. So that leaf-like thing is folia and there is some white matter, arbor vitae coming into the folia like branches of the tree. Yeah, like that. Okay. Tell me about the deep cerebellar nuclei now and tell me about the three layers of cerebellar cortex. As you are talking about the three layers of cerebellar cortex, you have to discuss the four nuclei of the cerebellum also. See, deep cerebellar nuclei, as you discuss, DEFT, D is for dentate nucleus, it is the most lateral. If you say D is for the dentate nucleus, the most lateral, then what is E for? E is emboliform and F is for fast EG. This is the most medial. So that is the most medial. Not only it is the most medial, it is also the oldest in evolution. And what is G for? G is for globose. These are called as interposed nuclei. Interposed nuclei. So you are telling that there are four deep cellular nuclei. Yes, they are actually D, E, F, G. And what is D for? D is dentate, the most lateral. Which is the most medial? The oldest. Who is the oldest? That is a fast EG. And uh, what about the emboliform? E for emboliform and G for globose. They are interposed nuclei. Once you have that kind of information, also remember dentate is the latest in evolution. The lateral most and latest, LL, yes, LL, lateral most is the latest in evolution, in evolution. Okay, then uh, this is the diagram you want to discuss, yes, actually. See, this is the vermis in the midline. If you say that is the vermis in the midline, fine, that is the vermis in the midline, fine. And you can also see the fastig nucleus, which is the most medial and the oldest most medial and the oldest. So this is the vermis in the midline and this is the fast EG which is the most medial and oldest. Yes, most medial and the oldest. In evolution, yes. Now which is the most lateral? Most lateral is the dentate nucleus. Lateral and uh, latest in evolution. So lateral most and latest in evolution, yes. What about the interpose? Interpose, this is uh, interpose nuclei, emboliform and globose together. So, telling emboliform and globose together are interposed. Yes, they are the interposed nuclei. These are the deep cerebellar nuclei. Also, you can see the green color is the midline. This blue color is paravermal region. And this uh, same color as my shirt is the lateral most. So this is the lateral most, yes. Actually, we have to understand that uh, vermis is the middle most and there is a paramormal region and then there is a lateral most region. The vermis region is oldest in evolution and uh, related with the fastig nucleus. The lateral region is latest in evolution related with the dentate nucleus and the this blue color is paraverbal region is related with the interposed nuclei. Whose interposed nuclei? That is globose and the emboliform. Like that. So just have some idea regarding that. And uh, you have to understand, we were fish some time back in evolution. It gave us the fast EG nuclei. So we got the fast EG nuclei from fish in evolution? Yes. Then we were developing into reptiles, amphibians, and then we became mammals. So first we were fish in evolution, yes. Then we became reptile, amphibians, yes. Now we are mammals, yes. So what about mammals? Mammals got the latest or lateral most nucleus. Who is that? Dentate. So mammals have got lateral most latest, the dentate nucleus, yes, in evolution. And what about the apes, the birds? Birds? Actually, evolution came like this and divided. So, fish 
amphibian reptiles and after that mammals and birds mammals and birds so we are mammals and birds go there anyway we are moving further i have told you vermish is in the midline it is the oldest paravermal region is uh, middle in intermediate and the lateral is the latest in evolution lateral is related with the dentate nucleus you can see the arrow mark here and the midline is related with the fastigi you can see the midline here and then if you are telling interpose then they are <coughs> intermediary in evolution so you are telling that oldest is the vermish and it is the fastigi nucleus it is uh, we got it from fish and evolution yes maybe this we got from the amphibian reptiles and this is the mammalian nucleus which is dentate nucleus now with that information with that information you see this is the fissure we were talking about and this is the flocculonodular lobe we were talking about so this is flocculonodular lobe the oldest uh, cerebellum yes this is the flocculonodular lobe and that is the oldest cerebellum and uh, in evolution it is the oldest so these are some of the details which we need to know and then let us look at some other details now <clears throat> as you're going further you'll find that we are going to talk about the archae cerebellum now which is oldest which is flocculonodular lobe and the nucleus fastigi it is vestibulo cerebellar pathway you got it from fish yes fish what is fish doing balance axial balance it is for axial balance you know we have got the vestibular apparatus for balance gravity so telling that archae cerebellum the oldest cerebellum is flocculonodular lobe and it is related to fastigi nuclei from fish and evolution is uh, vestibular cerebellar tract yes and uh, remember it uses inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach the cerebellum so it is also using inferior cerebellar peduncle along with that dorsal spinal cerebellar tract yes there was some dorsal spinal cerebellar tract which we will discuss again but it is for maintenance of equilibrium and what if it is lesion if it is lesion then there will be problems of equilibrium can you show some patient regarding that yeah see here there will be a patient here i'll show you this patient so you're telling that this patient has something wrong with flocculo nodular lobe yes there is a truncal ataxia and and so you're telling that something wrong with flocculonodal lobe and there's some truncal ataxia there's a wide base gate why a wide base gate because they have a feeling of falling down so wide base gate so this is about the oldest fish tells us about the axial balance yeah that is the point then what about the second one if you are talking about the second one it will be here what is that actually it is paleo cerebellum which is somewhere in the midline in the timeline not oldest not newest somewhere in the middle and it is anterior lobe if you remember we have discussed one patient with anterior lobe the heel shin test was positive and patient could not walk in a straight line if you remember so it is nucleus interpositus actually and which is globus and the emboliform and the tract is spinal cerebellar if you remember we have discussed spinal cerebellar tract is important for coordination also walking in a straight line and uh, then then uh, if it is damaged then you cannot walk in a straight line that will be a problem let us look at the patient paleo cerebellum is somewhere in the mid of the evolution and it is anterior lobe plus those nucleus interpositus and spinal cerebellar tract i told you where is the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract moving maybe this or maybe this both of them use inferior cerebellar peduncle so dorsal spinal cerebellar tract or vestibular cerebellar tract they use inferior cerebellar peduncle now as you are talking about the lesions you will find the patient was something like this this was your patient if you remember could not walk in a straight line there was a problem with coordination and heel shim test also became positive 
It is a problem of anterior lobe. There is a gait ataxia. What about the third, the most latest cerebellum? If you say third or the most latest cerebellum, then it is here. What is that? That is the new cerebellum, the most latest, and it is the posterior lobe, and then it is the dentate nucleus, and it is the cortico ponto cerebellar CPC pathway. What is CPC pathway? See, the most let latest is new cerebellum, and it is involving the posterior lobe, and it is the nucleus dentate nucleus, the most latest and lateral most, and it is the CPC pathway. What is CPC pathway? Cortico ponto cerebellar. From the cortex, you have the Pons and from the pons it is to the cerebellum, cortico ponto cerebellar, CPC pathway. And what is it for? Smooth performance of voluntary movements. Smooth performance of voluntary movements like what? What if it is lesion? If it is lesion, then you will find the patient is in front of you now. See here. This is the patient. There will be intention tremors. See, this is the latest uh, cerebellum, posterior lobe, and there will be intention tremors. Remember? So, that intention tremor is a feature of cerebellar lesion, and it is posterior lobe, the most latest, or the, you know, you can say, neo cerebellum, basically. Okay, fine. What is the second thing? Actually, we want to see the cells in the cerebellar cortex. There are three layers, and we have told that there is a <coughs> middle Purkinje. Now, if the middle is Purkinje, then what is in the outer layer? Outer layer, we have SV cell. What is SV cell? S for stellate cell and B for the basket cell. And uh, what about the inner layer? Inner layer is granular and it is GG cell. What is this GG cell? One is the granule cell and the other is Golgi cell itself. So, as you are talking about the cells in cerebellar cortex, there are five cells in the three layers. When you say there are five cells in the three layer, what is the middle layer? Middle layer is the Purkinje cell, but the outer layer is stellate basket and it is the molecular layer. And if you say granular layer, there is the GG cell, Golgi and granule cell. This is what we want to discuss and uh, this is the cerebellar folia. When you say this is the cerebellar folia, leaf-like appearance, there will be the white matter here. This is the white matter. Now, when you say the white matter is uh, coming, it will actually enter the leaf-like structures and uh, those leaf-like structures are called folia. Let us magnify the area. This white matter was the arbor vitae. We have discussed arbor vitae, the white matter within the gray matter. So, what do you want to know? What I want to know is that uh, there is an outer molecular layer and there is a middle Purkinje cell layer and then there is this uh, inner granular layer. You have magnified the folia, yes, and this is the arbor vitae. This is the arbor vitae. So, that is the gray White matter within the gray matter? Yes, arbor vitae. Okay, can we still magnify this diagram? Yes, you can. But this is the cerebellar cortex where you have the three layers and five cells. And as you magnify, you see there is an outer molecular layer, there is a middle Purkinje layer, and there is an inner granular layer. And this is the outer molecular layer, this is the Purkinje layer, and that will be the granular layer. So, we will still magnify. And when you still magnify, you will find here, this is the molecular layer. There you will have the stellate and basket cell and this is the Purkinje layer. Now you should be able to identify Purkinje cell like flask shaped cells with the multiple dendritic processes. So flask like flask shaped cell with multiple dendritic processes, yes, towards the molecular layer. So, telling that the Purkinje cell is in the middle layer and they have multiple dendritic process towards the outer molecular layer. Yes, towards the outer molecular layer. That is how you identify Purkinje cells. With all that information, we are looking at some efferent fibers into cerebellum. Actually, cerebellar circuitry. And when you talk about cerebellar circuitry, there are questions coming. Cerebellum is a big topic and a lot of questions come at various levels. So, we want to 
discuss almost everything out of it and uh, there are some climbing fibers. They are climbing to reach the Purkinje cell. Now, if they are climbing to reach the Purkinje cell, they are excited to Purkinje cell, but to reach the Purkinje, they will use the inferior cellula peduncle. There, they will be crossing the midline also and they come from the inferior olivary nucleus. That is why they are also called olivo cerebellar tract. Means, means there are some climbing fibers which will come from the inferior olive nucleus in the medulla oblongata. In the medulla oblongata, you have the inferior olivary nucleus and that is sending some fibers to cerebellum. That is why it is called olivo cerebellar tract and is passing through the inferior cerebellar peduncle, crossing also to reach the Purkinje and excite the Purkinje. There are other set of fibers also, they are called Mossy fibers and we have to understand that there are two types of incoming fibers, Mossy and Climbing, though Mossy are predominant. So predominantly the Mossy fibers and very few Climbing fibers. So Climbing fibers are very few and uh, mostly they are Mossy fibers. What about the Mossy fibers then? Let us look at the details, but uh, this is the diagram we have to draw. But before you draw the diagram, you have to discuss what you are supposed to draw. First of all, you can tell this is inferior olive nucleus in the medulla oblongata. If that was the inferior olive nucleus in the medulla oblongata, it was sending some climbing fibers. And uh, where are the climbing fibers going? Those climbing fibers were actually going towards the Purkinje cell. and exciting the Purkinje cell. So inferior olive nucleus in the medulla oblongata will give climbing fibers which will be uh, stimulating the Purkinje cell. Is that so? What about the Mossy fibers? Because these are very few. These are very few. And you told it is using some inferior cellular peduncle. Yes, inferior cellular peduncle they use. Now, there are four there are actually three layers and five cells. We have to discuss now the five cells in the cerebellar cortex. When you are talking about the five cells in the cerebellar cortex and their circuitry, you will understand that stellate and basket are there in the outer molecular layer. And uh, if you are talking about the Purkinje cell, then it is in the middle layer. Purkinje cell are in the middle layer. And if you are talking about the GG cell, that is granule and Golgi cell, granule and Golgi cell, GG cell, then they are actually in the inner granular layer. They are called granular layer because uh, granule cells are there, inner GG cell. Now, you see, Purkinje cells are in the middle layer and uh, they are uh, the chief efferent of the cerebellar cortex because there are five cells, only Purkinje cell is the only efferent of the cerebellar cortex. This question comes in the cerebellar cortex, there are five cells, but only one cell can send the information away and that is called the Purkinje cell. Just some questions there. Now, this was the inferior olive nucleus and it was sending the climbing fibers to stimulate the Purkinje cell. But climbing fibers are very few in number, mostly we got the mossy fibers, we talk about mossy fiber now. See mossy fibers come from many sources, I will discuss three of them, vestibular, spinal and CPC fiber. Vestibular cerebellar for balancing, spinal cerebellar for that uh, coordination thing and uh, CPC fiber, corticopontal cerebellar fibers. They are all passing through, see, vestibular cerebellar inferior, spinal cerebellar inferior, but there is also few fibers passing superior. If you remember, we have discussed two of the cerebellar tracts, dorsal is in the inferior, ventral was in the superior, and then we have the middle cerebellar peduncle where we have decussation of the, see this is ponto cerebellar tract. If you remember we have discussed ponto cerebellar tract are in the middle cerebellar peduncle. Beginning of the discussion we have told ponto cerebellar because middle cerebellar peduncle is connecting pons with cerebellum. So ponto cerebellar tract. Anyway, remember mossy fibers are excitatory on the granule cell using some glutamate. So, they are excitatory to the Purkinje again. Yes, climbing fibers are also excitatory. Yes, they were. 
also excited to you now with that information i am telling one person to walk in a straight line and as he is moving his uh, right lower limb the right sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract is activated as the right sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract is activated let us discuss the circuitry now right lower limb has moved and right sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract is activated as the right sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract is activated it will give you the mossy fibers and those mossy fibers are going to synapse in the granule cell and excite the granule cell now as the granule cells are excited they themselves will have some parallel fibers and using the parallel fibers they are going to excite the remaining four cells remaining four cells so you mean to say if once the granule cells were excited by the mossy fibers then the granule cell themselves have some parallel fibers to excite the other four cells what are the other four cells they are the steroid basket in the outer layer Purkinje in the middle layer and granule in the inner layer name see stellate and basket are excited in the outer layer and the golgi cell will be excited in the inner layer and and Purkinje cell will be excited in the middle layer so what will happen now what will happen now means all the five cells will have the process information of of the right lower limb moved so because the right lower limb has moved there is some process information in the five cells of the cerebellar cortex now yes and out of five cells only one cell has the capacity to send the information further which is only the Purkinje cell now where is this Purkinje cell sending the information out towards is a question you'd say it is going towards the deep cerebellar nuclei like dentate nucleus so it is going towards the deep cerebellar nuclei like dentate nucleus and there it is using GABA neuroinhibitory transmitter so Purkinje uses GABA neuroinhibitory transmitter on the deep cerebellar nuclei here yes could be dentate nucleus yes but it is GABA so neuroinhibitory and what is the deep cerebellar nuclei doing they will then uh, send the dentatothalamic tract towards the thalamus dentatothalamic tract towards the thalamus so this is one pathway which we are supposed to draw and let us do that as you're drawing this uh, pathway you can tell that there are three layers in the cerebellar cortex and five cells again this is the middle layer which is the Purkinje if you say this is the middle layer which is Purkinje cell then what is the outer layer outer layer we have the stellate and basket cell and inner layer inner layer we have the GG cell and this G cell is the granule cell that G cell is the Golgi cell this stellate cell is outer layer and basket cell is the outer layer now once you have told about the cells in the cerebellar cortex you are telling we have moved the right lower limb and as the right lower limb is moving the dorsal spino cerebellar tract was activated and as this tract is activated it will activate the granule cell these are called as the mossy fibers and uh, these mossy fibers which came were exciting the granule cell now granule cell itself is having some uh, parallel fibers parallel fibers and using those parallel fibers it will be exciting the remaining four cells so you are moving right lower limb and dorsal spinal cerebellar tract was activated and it is making the mossy fibers which will be synapsing in the granule cells so that granule cell itself is excited sending some parallel fibers and these parallel fibers are supposed to excite the other four cells which are the stellate and basket and the Purkinje and the Golgi now all of these cells were really activated by the parallel fibers but all these cells five cells only one cell has the capacity to send the information further and that is the Purkinje cell now as the Purkinje cell is sending information further, the only efferent, only efferent from the cerebellar cortex is Purkinje cell using GABA, the neuro inhibitory transmitter will activate the, uh, inhibit the dentate nucleus. And what is dentate nucleus? It is a deep cerebellar nucleus. And what is it doing? It is uh, further 
sending information towards the thalamus that is why it is called as the dentato thalamic tract dentato thalamic tract so you are telling that uh, there was uh, this Purkinje cell sending GABA on the dentate nucleus which is a deep cerebellar nucleus which is sending dentatothalamic tract towards the thalamus. Is that so? Yes. And what about the inferior olive nucleus in the medulla oblongata? Inferior olive nucleus which is in the middle and medulla oblongata was sending climbing fiber to stimulate the Purkinje cell. And uh, these climbing fibers are stimulating the Purkinje cell are very few in number. If they are very <coughs> few in number, which fibers are more in number? They are the mossy fibers. Mossy fibers are more in number and climbing fibers are less in number. These fibers are also called as olivocerebellar tract. They are also called olivocerebellar tract. So this is the circuitry which we wanted to know. You know, almost everything is excitatory here except this Purkinje which was inhibiting the GABA which is neuro inhibitory. This is the inhibitory pathway. Otherwise most of the pathways here are excitatory though not necessarily everybody but uh, whatever we had discussed were excitatory except uh, this one. It was neuro inhibitory on dentate nucleus, the deep cerebellar nucleus. So this is something which you wanted to know. Now we want to talk about this question again. You already have known the marked cell is, uh, yes, who is that? The marked cell is, uh, yes, the Purkinje. How do you know it is Purkinje? Can you see one thing? Purkinje, flask shaped cell, sending the dendritic process towards the molecular layer. So, sending dendritic process towards the molecular layer. Yes. Okay. So, you are talking about Purkinje cell here and this is the molecular layer, then that must be the Granular layer, yes, and this must be the arbor vitae, yes, that is arbor vitae, exons. So these are the exons, arbor vitae, and this is the inner granular layer, this is the Purkinje layer, and this is the outer molecular layer, because the dendritic process are towards the molecular layer, yes, that is why, molecular layer. So marked cell, Purkinje, is inhibiting what? GABA, what GABA? It is GABA to be used on deep cerebellar nuclei, for example, dentate nucleus, that is your answer. Now, once you got your answer, fine, let's move further. You are uh, telling that the answer is deep cerebellar nuclei, which could be dentate nucleus, fine. Now, we want to look at this, efferents in superior cerebellar peduncle are mostly from, what do you think? Superior cerebellar peduncle, are you talking about dentatothalamic tract? Yeah, dentatothalamic tract. If you say dentatothalamic tract, then I'll tell you. It came from dentate nucleus. And what is dentate nucleus? That is the deep cerebellar nucleus. So that is the answer. Yes. Efren and superior cerebellar peduncle are mostly dentatothalamic tract. And they came from dentate nucleus, which is a deep cerebellar nucleus. So that is the answer. Yes. Okay. We'll keep the answer then. If that is the answer, fine. But I need more details of uh, dentatothalamic tract, these peduncles, the pathways. And if you want to discuss all that, if you want to discuss all that, then what you need is one more question. This question is asking efferent from cerebellum. Now, if you say efferent from cerebellum, no problem. We have just discussed dentatothalamic tract. That was the efferent. So dendrothalamic tract was efferent. Yes, where it came from? No problem. It is the deep nuclei, the dentate nuclei. So again, the answer is deep nuclei. Yes, dendrothalamic tract is the major efferent from the cerebellum. But if somebody asks you, Purkinje cell, then when will you answer Purkinje? Purkinje can be my answer only if somebody asks me. Efferent from cerebellar cortex, cerebellar cortex. If somebody asks me, efferent from cerebellar cortex, then I will say Purkinje cell. So see the difference. <coughs> A question can ask you efferent from cerebellar cortex. That time your answer will be Purkinje because it is the only cell which is giving efferent. But this question was just asking cerebellum. So somebody asking cerebellar cortex, you may answer Purkinje. 
but this question was asking cerebellum so answer should remain dentate nucleus or deep nuclei see a single word can change the answer be careful here the answer is deep nuclei dentate nucleus now cerebellar pathways and the peduncles we have to discuss as we are discussing cerebellar pathways and the peduncles let's do that we have to talk about uh, dorsal spinal cerebellar tract and dentato thalamic tract and then there is the communication with the left cerebellum cerebrum this is the pathway which we are supposed to draw and as you are drawing this pathway this is the kind of diagram we are going to have in this pathway, we will tell that this is the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, this is the dentatothalamic tract and there is a left cerebrum activated. But what we want to know is about the peduncles basically. So let's do that. This is the midline of the body and the highest brain is cerebrum. So we are looking at the left cerebrum. Why? Because we are moving the right lower limb. So, you want to look at the left cerebrum because you are moving the right lower limb? Yes. Okay. What is below that? Below that is thalamus on each side, but I am focusing upon the left thalamus. Left thalamus. Then what is below that? Below that is the brain stem. This is the brain stem. And what are the three component of brain stem? Three component of brain stem are of course midbrain followed by pons followed by medulla oblongata. So, you have put a midline of the body there. Yes. And this is the highest brain, the cerebrum. Yes, this is left cerebrum, this is left thalamus. And below that is brain stem having midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Yes, what is below that? Below what? Below brain stem. Below brain stem is the spinal cord. This is spinal cord. Now, if you say this is the spinal cord, fine. I found some exons in the spinal cord. Which exons did you find? I found some exons in the spinal cord here. I want to discuss these exons in the spinal cord but before you start discussing these uh, exons in the spinal cord you have to discuss cerebellum where is cerebellum cerebellum is attaching to the brain stem if you tell the cerebellum is attaching to brain stem how the cerebellum is attaching to brain stem with the help of superior cerebellar peduncle and the middle cerebellar peduncle and the inferior cerebellar peduncle so there is superior cerebellar peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle inferior cerebellar peduncle then what are these basically they are cerebellar hemispheres cerebellar hemispheres so right and left yeah this is left cerebellar hemisphere that will be right cerebellar hemisphere so basically you are talking about right cerebellar hemisphere, left cerebellar hemisphere attaching to the brain stem with the help of superior, middle, inferior, peduncle now. Carrying some fibers? Yeah, I want to know which fibers which tract is carrying. This is the discussion. Now, as we were talking about the exons in the spinal cord, these exons are supposed to go to cerebellum. So we are calling them as spinocerebellar tract. And the spinocerebellar tract run in two bundles, you will find that the most <coughs> of the fibers are dorsal and very few fibers are ventral. Dorsal is mostly and ventral are few, yes. So dorsal are more and ventral are few, yes. The names are dorsal ventral, spinocerebellar tract. So you are mentioning that there are some exons in the spinal cord which are going to cerebellum. That's why you are calling them as spinal cerebellar tract and most of those exons are running dorsal. Very few ventral. Yes, clinically, dorsal is more important, ventral is less important. Okay, then we'll focus mostly on dorsal spinal cerebellar tract then. Yes, that's the point. And as you say so, we have asked the patient to move the right lower limb. As the right lower limb was moving, there is a change of the position since the proprioception and that proprioception was carried by right-sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract towards the cerebellum. There was this patient moving right lower limb and the change of position since the proprioception was carried by right-sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract to the same sided cerebellum. So this is the right-sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract. Yes, it is running ipsilaterally. Running ipsilaterally forming mossy fibers. Forming mossy fibers and entering the same sided cerebellum using inferior cerebellar peduncle. Inferior cerebellar peduncle. So once again, see, 
We ask the patient to walk in a straight line as the right lower limb moved. The information was guided by right sided dorsal spinocerebellar tract, and this information is running ipsilaterally, making the mossy fibers using the inferior cerebellar peduncle to enter the same sided cerebellum. But then few fibers cross the midline. And as the few fibers cross the midline, you will find the few of the fibers are crossing the midline, you'll find they will start running as. See, the proprioception information, few fibers will cross the midline and start running as. Ventral spinocerebellar tract. Ventral spinocerebellar tract. So, where is the crossing happening? In the spinal cord. In the spinal cord. You mean to say right lower limb moved, but the information is going to left side of spinal cord now. Yes as ventral spinocerebellar tract crossing in the spinal cord in the midline and this fiber is using superior cerebellar peduncle to reach the left cerebellar hemisphere. So you are telling that ventral spinocerebellar tract is using the superior cerebellar peduncle, yes superior cerebellar peduncle to reach the opposite side cerebellum and this opposite side cerebellum is telling where are you coming, where are you coming, I am not your cerebellum, go back to your own cerebellum and it will go back to its own cerebellum but that going back is within the cerebellum, it is not going to use any peduncle, it is called recrossing of fiber, there is a crossing of fiber in the spinal cord and there is recrossing of fiber in the cerebellum itself. It does not use any peduncle. So you are mentioning that a few fibers of the right lower limb position crossing the midline are recrossing within the cerebellum. Yes, ultimately they should reach the same sided cerebellum because right lower limb moved, right cerebellum should have the information. Okay, fine. Can we proceed further with mossy fiber? Yeah, you know, mossy fibers are going to stimulate the granule cell. And when they stimulate the granule cell, what the granule cell will do? Granule cell will stimulate many cells and one of them is the Purkinje cell. So, how will the granule cell stimulate the Purkinje cell? That is the parallel fibers, parallel fibers. So, you're telling that mossy fibers are going to stimulate the granule cell? Yes. And when the mossy fibers are stimulating the granule cell, their granule cell will stimulate the Purkinje cell. Yes, using the parallel fibers. And what the Purkinje cell will do? Purkinje cell is the only efferent from the cerebellar cortex. Yeah, okay, fine. But what is it doing? Purkinje cell is now using GABA on this dentate nucleus. This is the dentate nucleus in the cerebellum. So, you are telling that Purkinje cell is using GABA on the dentate nucleus now. Yes. See, what we are telling is mossy fibers, dorsal spinocerebellar tract, is uh, stimulating the granule cell which is using parallel fibers to stimulate the Purkinje cell and Purkinje cell is inhibiting the dentate nucleus using GABA. And what is the dentate nucleus doing? Dentate nucleus is uh, using superior cerebellar peduncle to reach the opposite sided thalamus, dentate or thalamic tract if you remember. So, you are telling that dentate nucleus now is using superior cerebellar peduncle. Yes, superior cerebellar peduncle. So, dentate nucleus is using superior cerebellar peduncle so that it will come and uh, uh, go to the thalamus on the opposite side. Yes, actually, as it is going to the opposite thalamus, it is passing through the red nucleus in the upper midbrain and uh, passing through the red nucleus in the upper midbrain. This pathway has a name which is called as dentato rubrothalamic tract, full name. You mean to say dentate nucleus which is using superior cerebellar peduncle and communicating with the opposite thalamus, contralateral thalamus is passing through some red nucleus in the upper midbrain. Yes, and because it is passing through red nucleus in the upper midbrain, that pathway is called dentato rubrothalamic tract. Yes, dentato rubrothalamic tract. Okay using superior cerebellar peduncle, fine. What is this thalamus doing? It is communicating left cerebrum, cerebrum and what is the left cerebrum doing? Left cerebrum has the process information now 
for the movement of the right lower limb. So, as the right lower limb has moved, the information proprioception was processed by cerebellum and sent to the left cerebrum because it is the left cerebrum which is supposed to move the right lower limb. And how the left cerebrum moves the right lower limb using the pyramidal tract, corticospinal tract. So, you are telling that the left cerebrum must have the processed information of the movement of the right lower limb, yes, and then only it can control it properly by corticospinal tract to the pyramidal tract, yes, which crosses in the lower medulla, crosses in the lower medulla, corticospinal tract will cross in the lower medulla and then control this lower limb and for, for coordination of voluntary motor activity, coordination of voluntary motor activity, what if I have a lateral medullary syndrome? What is that? Lateral medullary syndrome. You mean to say Wallenberg syndrome? Yes. You mean to say ischemia, lateral medulla? Yes. If you have lateral medullary syndrome, Wallenberg syndrome, then the spinocerebellar tract is damaged and there will be cerebellar ataxia. What is cerebellar ataxia? Heel shin test will become positive and patient cannot walk in a straight line. So understand, when there is a lateral medullary ischemia of Wallenberg syndrome, spinocerebellar tract is gone. So, the patient don't know the position sense of the lower limb. So, heel shin test will become positive and cannot walk in a straight line in coordination. Cerebellar ataxia is in coordination. Okay. What about that CPC fiber? You were talking about some CPC fiber? Yes, it is a feedback mechanism and this is the CPC fiber. There is a feedback mechanism, it is CPC fiber. What is CPC fiber? Cerebro, ponto, cerebellar tract. So, this is pons. Yeah, this is pons, of course. Okay, so you are telling <coughs> this is the CPC fiber. Yes. That is cerebro, ponto, cerebellar tract. Yes. I think it is using middle peduncle. Yes, because ponto cerebellar tract. You see, ponto cerebellar tract. Okay, ponto cerebellar tract, middle cerebellar peduncle. Fine. This is the CPC fiber. Yes. So, you have to understand that uh, the left cerebellum is sending fibers to the pons, which is crossing the midline and using the middle cerebellar peduncle. These are also mossy fibers. They are also mossy fibers. So, they will excite the granule cell. Yes. It's a feedback mechanism. Then the granule cell will excite the Purkinje cell, will inhibit the dentate, will be now going to cerebrum and again loop mechanism. Yes, it is a feedback mechanism actually. So, <laughs> cerebrum is talking about cerebellum, yes, and cerebellum is talking about cerebrum, yes, they keep talking with each other, feedback mechanism. Cerebro ponto cerebellar tract using middle cerebellar peduncle. Now, one more thing we have to remember, <coughs> if you remember, we have discussed, there is a inferior olive nucleus in the medulla and that inferior olive nucleus in the medulla is sending the climbing fiber to the Purkinje cell, if you remember. So, you are telling that inferior olive nucleus in the medulla is sending some climbing fiber to the Purkinje cell, yes, and they are called olivo cerebellar tract. These are the climbing fibers and they are also called as the olivo cerebellar tract. So, you are telling that in the medulla blangata there is some inferior olive nucleus and which is sending some climbing fiber towards the Purkinje cell using which peduncle? The inferior cerebellar peduncle. So, in the inferior cerebellar peduncle, you have one set of mossy fiber and one set of the climbing fiber. Who is the mossy fiber? Mossy fibers, you already know, is dorsal spinocerebellar tract. That is the mossy fiber. Then who is the climbing fiber? Climbing fiber is, of course, olivocerebellar tract. So, this is the olivocerebellar tract, which is climbing fiber, which is uh, passing inferior cerebellar peduncle there. Yes. Can you tell me one incoming fiber in each peduncle? Now, one incoming fiber in each peduncle, I will tell you two. See, this is olivocerebellar tract in the inferior peduncle and this is the dorsal spinocerebellar tract in the inferior peduncle. Can you tell me one incoming fiber in the middle peduncle? Yes, that was the pontocerebellar tract. Full name, full name is uh, 
Cortico ponto cellular tract. And can you tell me one incoming fiber in the superior peduncle? Yeah, this one. Who is this uh, incoming fiber in the superior peduncle? That was very few fibers and name ventral spinal cellular tract. So ventral spinal cellular tract is the incoming fiber in the superior cellular peduncle. Can you tell me one outgoing fiber in the superior cellular peduncle? One outgoing fiber in the superior cellular peduncle is the dentatothalamic tract. Full name? Full name is actually dentatorubrothalamic tract. So this is the dentato rubrothalamic tract and it is the outgoing channel in the superior cellular peduncle. Yes, these are some of the questions which you have to remember and let us practice the MCUs now about the cellular peduncles. See, climbing fibers are olivocellular, inferior cellular peduncle, excitatory to Purkinje, crossing in the medulla, climbing up the inferior peduncle. This is what we said. Mossy fibers came from spinal cellular tract. If it is inferior cellular peduncle, it was dorsal. If it was superior cellular peduncle, it was ventral. So, mossy fibers are from various sources, but spinal cellular tract we have discussed. There is a dorsal, which is the inferior cellular peduncle. There is ventral, which is superior cellular peduncle. Though superior is not very important. And it was excitatory to granule cell, of course which themselves are excitatory to Purkinje using some parallel fibers. And uh, then, then you have CPC fiber. Where is CPC fiber coming from? Cerebral cortex to the pons, to the cerebellum. Which peduncle? Middle peduncle. Decussation in the pons only. So CPC fiber corticopontal cellular tract is a feedback mechanism and it is passing through middle cellular peduncle there. And additionally, you can just remember some vestibular cellular tract, which is also using inferior cellular peduncle. It is, we learnt it from the fish. We remember axial balance, fish axial balance. Okay, with that information, you are looking at this question asking, tract not present in inferior peduncle, not. Immediately, you know the answer. But why? That is the answer. Because dentator rubrothalamic tract is not in the inferior peduncle. Then where it is? Superior cerebellar peduncle. Then what about the dorsal spinal cerebellar? Of course, dorsal spinal cerebellar is in the inferior cerebellar peduncle, forming mossy fiber. And what about olivo cerebellar? Olivo cerebellar is inferior peduncle, climbing fibers. Climbing fibers. And what about the cuneocerebellar? Actually, cuneocerebellar is the upper limb proprioception. And if you say it is the upper limb proprioception, it also uses inferior cerebellar peduncle. See, lower limb proprioception is uh, dorsal spinal cerebellar tract. And upper limb proprioception is cuneocerebellar tract. But both use the inferior cellular peduncle. If you want to know the position sense of upper limb, you use called cuneocellular tract. But that is also using inferior cellular peduncle. So is it okay here? Yes, that is okay. Problem is with see cuneocellular upper limb proprioception using inferior peduncle. No problem. Problem is with the, that. So cuneocerebellar carry proprioception of the upper body run via cuneate fasciculus accessory. Cu Neural anatomy is never ending quest. So cuneocerebellar tract carrying some proprioception of upper body to the cuneate fasciculus. What is all this? What is happening? Uh, Sometimes even I wonder what is happening. Anyway, don't bother here. Just tell me the answer. Answer is dentator rubrothalamic tract. And then, then there is this question, PGI Chandigarh question, triple repeat, asking. What is not present in the inferior peduncle? And by this time, you will know mostly what is the answer. Multiple answers can be there, PGH Chandigarh. So, what do you think the answer is? See, in this question, these are my answers immediately. Why? Because pontocellular tract is present in the middle cerebellar peduncle, not the inferior and and the anterior spinocellular tract, which is ventral spinocellular tract, is present in the 
Superior cerebellar peduncle, not the inferior. This question is on inferior peduncle. So these are the answers. Yes. What about the cuneo cerebellar? We just said upper limb proprioception, inferior peduncle. What about the dorsal spinal cerebellar? Dorsal spinal cerebellar, you don't know. It is inferior peduncle. What about the vestibular cerebellar? The fish thing. Fish thing. Axial balance, inferior cerebellar peduncle. So somehow we have managed the information, which is too much, enormous for human brain. There's a chance that we'll have short circuit now. Though the cerebellum is over. But by this time you must be having some short circuit in the brain. Too much of information. But it is important. We have to deal with the questions. So we'll keep these answers. Yes, they are the exceptions. They are the answers. Pontocerebellar is in the middle cerebellar peduncle, not inferior. Anterior spinal cerebellar tract is superior cerebellar peduncle, not inferior.